Hey guys, welcome to your week 12 vocab review. Today we're going to be covering section 7 and really just module 37 as we introduce this uh, really short kind of chapter in our book. What we're going to be covering is only these five terms today. And what this section is getting into is how do we have long run growth? How do we create it? And how do we accelerate it best we can? Because the best way to get the economy growing and making a society richer in the long term is to move the long run aggregate supply curve. So the key to this whole section is how do we take that long run aggregate supply curve and keep increasing it? So let's kind of get into this. First, there's this little kind of mathematical trick that uh, you guys should know about called the rule of 70. So uh, when I was growing up, it was called the rule of 72, but the rule of 70 finds out it works just fine. What the rule of 70 is, essentially is, is you take the growth rate of an economy. So let's say we have an economy that's growing by 5% per year. So if that economy is growing by 5% per year, how long will it take for that economy to double? Well, if you use a rule of 70, you just take the growth rate, which is 5%, and you divide it into 70. So five goes into 70 14 times. That's how many years it'll take for the economy to double in size. So it's just kind of a way of measuring compound interest uh, in a very simple way. This also works for investing. So if you're investing your money and you're like, hey, I get 35% interest on this uh, investment, well, then it would take two years for that money to double. So there you go. All right, the next one is labor productivity. This will be a focus of something that we'll cover fairly frequently. What labor productivity is, is it simply output per worker. It's you take the amount of workers you have in economy, divide it by real GDP. And that's showing how much output, goods and services, each worker is producing. The key is if you can increase that, you can increase the amount of output in the economy and per capita, which means people are getting richer and that long run aggregate supply curve will keep moving. All right. So the things that'll shift the long run aggregate supply curve, we learned that there were five things. There was technology, human capital, and the three facts of production, land, labor, and capital. But we tend to focus on fiscal capital because finding more land and finding more labor is much harder to do, but it's easier for, for a society or an economy to gain more fiscal capital. So fiscal capital, remember, that's man-made goods used to produce other goods and services. So what do we mean by fiscal capital growth? Well, we want workers to produce more. So how can you do that? One is to give them more tools to produce. If I'm here trying to make a birdhouse and you give me a saw, I'll be more productive. If you give me a hammer as well, I'll be more productive. If you give me a better saw, I will be more productive. That's how fiscal capital works. But there's something interesting about fiscal capital, and that is its growth has diminishing marginal returns. What it means is this. We'll be having a graph that we'll uh, get more introduced to, but quick introduction to it is we have output here. So think that's GDP, your output. And over here, we have physical capital. So what happens as we look at this, we can go ahead and see that if we had no or very low physical capital and someone gave us a little bit, we would end up with a fair amount of growth and with no physical capital would make nothing. But if I give you some more physical capital, we'd have more growth. And as I add physical capital and I get better hammers or more hammers and more saws, I can make more birdhouses. But the problem is at some point you start giving me one, one small hammer and one big hammer and I'll be more productive, but I'll be less more productive. You give me a saw, I'll be more productive. But if you give me a nicer saw or another saw, I'll be more productive, but less more productive, which means we'll get more output, but we'll get less more as you add more tools and resources. And if we connect that, this growth curve will essentially taper off. So we know in our economy, if we want people to be more productive, give them fiscal capital and you'll get more output. But as you add more and more fiscal capital, it'll diminish. This is something that we find um, was kind of relative to the Soviet Union. 
When Russia became the Soviet Union, it had very little physical capital. So as the communist uh, organizer said, let's build factories, let's build dams and infrastructure, they added physical capital to the economy and growth increased. But as they added more and more and more without the incentives to encourage necessarily people to gain a lot of human capital or for people to actually invent new things and increase their technology, their economy started to kind of lag and they followed this curve where they added physical capital but got less extra output added. So that's physical capital. So you can get more output, and we can kind of call that long run output, but it diminishes as time goes on. All right, other things we have here is human capital. Human capital is when you take labor and you make it more skilled, educated, or experienced. So you take your labor and make your labor better. This is something the US has been flourishing on for the last many decades. More people are going to school. They're graduating high school. More people are getting college degrees. And as that happens, workers become more productive. It, it's, when, when I think about my grandfather who only had a sixth grade education trying to get a job or a good paying job in today's modern economy, it seems like it'd be very, very difficult. And my other grandfather did have a college degree. So he was an exception, but he was an accountant. And when computers came around, he wanted nothing to do with them. He thought they just were the bane of existence. So as you increase human capital, you get more output. And that's why their education in human capital was lower and we've been increasing it since then. Okay, moving on, we have technology. And technology does something kind of special with this curve. What technology is, is a technical means of producing something. Remember, it doesn't have to be computers or microchips or software. Those things are technology but it could be how you reorganize an economy, how you organize the business and production stru structure. So what technology is, is when you add new technology, new types of machines, new ways of producing things, you can get additional output on this curve. But instead of the curve bending like this, what it'll be able to do is grow up like this which means with the same amounts of physical capital, you can get more output. And when you add more technology, you can go ahead and take this curve and make it grow more again. So the role of technology allows us to increase output, but much more rapidly, even if we picked a certain point and tried to go ahead and find out how much output we could have. So although we said the Soviet Union was growing this way, the United States was increasing technology, consumer technology, not just industrial and military technology, and our economy was accelerating faster than theirs. So that's kind of how you can see the levels of output in that aspect. So that's our short part of the things that can move long run uh, economic growth, our, our output and physical capital graph, and well, I hope this helps, and I'll see you guys at the quiz on Monday. Bye.